Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Matley, Lab Services Manager at Ocean Insights, and I'm going to be talking with you today about a demonstration using our NIR products to look at soil characterization. With the Earth's growing population, climate change, and very poor soil management techniques that have gone on over the years, we have a real need for a method to characterize soil. The current techniques for doing this are very time consuming and expensive. They're also labor intensive. So these are techniques that require a trained scientist or a trained engineer to make the measurements. What is really needed in the agriculture, precision agriculture market is really some rapid, low cost, fast technique that can be used by anyone to determine the soil composition. So some of the components that are really interesting that we can characterize with near infrared or NIR spectroscopy is the organic matter. So think compost, Think things that are going to help to fertilize the plants, the texture of the soil. So in this case, we'd be looking at how much sand or silt or loam are going to be present. The clay mineralogy. So what are the clay composition that we'd have there? The availability of those nutrients. So we can put loads of fertilizer on our crops, but if it's not available for our crops, then it's not going to do us any good. We can also look at the structure of the soil, microbial activity, and even fertility. So a huge range of parameters to give our soil its health checkup to make sure that everything is, is as it should be and is going to produce good crops for us. One of the big advantages of NIR is it's simple due to the sample preparation. Sample preparation is going to be much easier with NIR spectroscopy than other techniques. It's very safe. You're not having to use hazardous chemicals for your analysis. You're just measuring how light interacts with the soil. It's fast. NIR spectroscopy can give you answers within a few seconds, for example. And my, one of my favorite parts is that this modular spectroscopy approach to NIR spectroscopy, it gives you the ability to make the measurements in a lab where many people are making them, or if I'm on a farm, I can actually make the measurements in the field. And this can extend from a setup similar to what you'll see in the demonstration I'm going to show you today, all the way to a putting spectrometers onto a UAV, which can fly over the crops and do remote sensing, but on a much more local level. So there's a lot of benefits that come from NIR spectroscopy alone. And then you add the modular spectroscopy approach, which we'll show you in the demonstration today, and you begin to see that now this really enables measurements anywhere. What I'm going to be using today in this demonstration is our NearQuest Plus. I chose to go with the version that covers the widest range in the NIR, in this case from 900 to 2500 nanometers. When developing calibration models and trying to determine composition and doing quantification, you want to have as much spectral range as possible so you have as much spectral content as possible. I've coupled the NearQuest Plus with our high-powered tungsten halogen light source. And the whole measurement is taking place through our standard 600 micron reflection probe. The reflection probe is being held very securely in place by a reflection probe holder. This is one part of the setup that is absolutely critical. You need to make sure that the distance and the angle between your reflection probe and either your reference or your sample, you need to make sure that these remain absolutely consistent throughout your measurements. So in this case, I have, I've taken my reflection probe, put it in a reflection probe holder, and I have also used a ring stand to really further secure the setup into place. So this is a very important step for you. Make sure that you do not change the distance between your probe and your sample at any time during the measurement. If you do, you need to take a new reference. So we've got our setup here and we've got several different samples that we're looking at. I scoured the globe looking for the best soil samples for this demonstration. No, just kidding. I actually went to Home Depot and purchased several different soil samples. So I've got starting at the bottom sand, which should be relatively low in terms of moisture content and organic content for sure. Then I've got just some standard topsoil. Nothing special has been done to this. I've also got organic matter, which is going to be a combination of compost and manure. So of course, we're expecting to see a lot of our organic content there. And last but not least, premium topsoil. So we took the topsoil and they add some other things to it to make it 
more expensive, I'm sorry, to make it premium. So we'll take a look and see if we can see any differences between these when we're using our NearQuest setup that we have here. This is a diffuse reflectance setup, and this is the common setup that's used for looking at soil samples or other types of measurements that are made in the NIR. To start our measurements, we need to make sure a couple of things. I'm not gonna show them here, but we all know that we need to warm up our light source and our spectrometer, light source at least 30 minutes, just to get rid of the drift that may occur. We want it to reach a thermal equilibrium and make sure we have a very stable light source. After you've warmed up your light source and your spectrometer, you're gonna take your dark and your reference. In this case, we're using the WS1 reflection standard as the standard that we're gonna use and reference all of our reflections data to. One thing I wanna point out before I start the measurements is how heterogeneous these samples are. So if, for example, I take the lid off of my organic sample, you can see just visually that location to location on this sample are, are very different to the eye. So imagine what the spectrometer is gonna see. We see similar inhomogeneity even when we go to the sand sample which is a little more homogeneous, but you can see there are different things in that sample. And as we try to sample representatively, we need to keep in mind that we need to take more than one spectrum from each one of these samples. So my standard operating procedure is to take, in this case, I'm taking at least 10 measurements at 10 locations around the sample. And what I've done to make it easy for myself is I have actually put some markings on the side of the petri dish so I make sure that I'm getting 10 different locations by rotating underneath the probe. What I want to show you in our OceanView software is what this repeatability looks like. So if you focus in on this top window that's called unprocessed absorbance, what you're going to see is the lack of repeatability that we get location to location in the samples. Okay, well let's make some measurements of these soil samples that we have here waiting for us. We're gonna start out by looking at the organic sample. And one of the reasons I wanted to start with this one is there's some variability here that you can see by eye. So depending on where I'm making the measurements on the sample, I would expect to see slight differences in my spectral data. So let's take a look at that and I'll demonstrate for you in Ocean View what that looks like. So I'm going to replace my standard, my WS1 standard, with my organic sample, which should have about 90% moisture. I'm going to take a quick screen capture of that. So we overlay it. And then I'm going to turn my sample a little bit so I can sample at another location. Same thing, I'm going to do an overlay. And you can see we're starting to see some variability, even though this is the exact same sample that was pulled out of the same bag of organic material. So what this is showing you is there's a lot of variability even in a sample that you believe might be very well mixed, very homogeneous, and that's not the case. When I'm looking at the spectral data, how do I know which one of these represents the true moisture content for the sample? And the truth is, it's a combination of all of them. So my recommendation when looking at these types of samples is to take multiple measurements. I like to do 10 measurements and average those together and then do my data processing for moisture content or composition on that average spectrum that I've collected. What I'm doing here, the technique I'm using is, is just moving the samples myself. We do have some accessories, the TC Dynacup, that will actually rotate the sample for you and allow you to collect all 10 of those spectra and output the average spectrum together. So this is what our organic sample looks like. If you look down in the bottom window, what I've done is done a baseline correction. So I took this region where there's very little absorbance going on at about 1700 nanometers, and I'm essentially subtracting that off of this spectrum. So what that does is it brings the spectrum right down to the baseline and it makes it easier for me to, to compare the peaks that we're seeing. These peaks, by the way, we know are very strong moisture peaks. NIR is outstanding at detecting moisture. And so that's what we're seeing here. The organic material, the compost manure combination has somewhere around 90% moisture. So we get these nice big moisture peaks. Let's see how that compares then to our premium topsoil, which I would expect to be almost as good as organic. Let's see what we get. And let's focus down here where we're looking at the baseline corrected spectrum. 
In this case, what we're seeing is a decrease in our moisture peaks. So here's the organic material we looked at. Here is our premium topsoil, which is uh, a little bit lower in moisture content, probably closer to 80% moisture content. So as we would expect in that situation, those moisture peaks have decreased. So let's take it a step further and look at samples with even less moisture. We're going to then move to the topsoil, which is just topsoil, nothing added, nothing special. And what we're gonna see when we look down here that the topsoil is very similar in moisture content. So the organic, the addition of the organic, at least into our premium topsoil, did not give us a big bump in moisture. Last but not least is going to be our sand sample. And the sand sample, once we get our spectra acquired here, what we can see is virtually no moisture in that sample compared to our organic material and then our topsoils. So just using this very simple measurement, just putting our sample under here and taking some measurements, we can very quickly visually see the differences in these in terms of moisture content. There's probably a lot more information here that we can't see by eye. So one thing to keep in mind is while moisture is a very direct measurement, I can look at it, I can tell the moisture content based on what the spectrum looks like, the absorbance level or the reflectance level of the spectrum. Some of these other constituents, the organic materials, some of the other things, these are gonna require chemometrics or some more advanced data processing to get really good data for the particular samples. So as we can see from the spectral data that we've collected just in this very quick demo, we've already been able to assess which one of these particular soils we might actually wanna purchase for our own backyard garden. Just by eye, we can tell that the organic, the compost material is gonna give us a lot more moisture to be available for our plants, for example. This just scratches the surface. Uh, in this case, we're getting great spectral data from the NearQuest Plus. The next step will be to really begin to extract, to, to apply that spectral knowledge and try and extract composition of more constituents beyond the moisture and try and understand more about what's going on. And why this is important is because farmers and, and, and those who are growing crops, they really need to have information at their fingertips in terms of what this, the moisture content, uh, the organic content, all of the different properties of their soil are. And so this begins to develop a platform for them to enable them to make those measurements right there on their farm if they'd like. I'm hoping this demonstration that I've shared with you today has given you a much better idea of what near-infrared spectroscopy can be used for and how we can take the applied spectral knowledge, that spectral data that we're getting from our measurements, and actually turn it into answers that are related to composition and quantification of the components present.